Now in conducting your case study, there are two main considerations that you need to um, look into uh, in terms of planning how to conduct your case study. The first is your participant selection. Um, who is going to be involved in the case study? Now, if your case study is on an individual, then that's pretty easy. Uh, it's them. If it's on a class, then you need to think about, is it going to include the students? How many students? Which students? Um, is it going to involve the teacher? Is it going to involve the principal? Is it going to involve the parents? These are all um, potential stakeholders in a classroom investigation in terms of a case study. So you need to think about who you might have access to. Now, um, in terms of your case studies, it might be other students involved in a course, it might be lecturers, it might be a school that you're involved with or a language group or a, a club or some other educational environment. As long as it has something to do with education and has something to do with educational technology. And we'll discuss the framing of that in terms of your portfolio um, case study in the tutorial in more detail. But think about who the participants will be in your case study. And that can be either informed by your case study design or it may direct the case study design. Um, if you've only got access to certain individuals, then that may limit what your case study is actually focused on in terms of the case. Now, then you need to think about the data collection. What sort of data are you going to be able to collect about your case? Now, this can be done in various ways. Um, there may be documents available. Uh, these might be curriculum documents, might be syllabus documents, it might be um, course profiles, um, course, course information. Um, there could be a whole range of different aspects of document, documentary data that you can utilize. Then there'll be potentially archival records. So past documents, it might be past exams, past assignments, uh, past course profiles. Um, so documentary data tends to be the current documents. Archival data tends to be past um, collections of documentary data. Then there might be interviews, interviews with the various uh, participants involved in your case study. Anyone that can give a greater understanding of the case and of the research question that you're exploring. Then there's direct observations where well, you may have the opportunity to go and observe or if you're part of a class or a course or a school or a classroom those observations may be a bit easier but in other cases you may need to um, uh, seek permission to go and conduct that. Now in terms of permissions this is not part of an actual research study um, so you're not actually conducting research this is a um, university assignment and so you don't need to worry so much about ethics in that respect. Now as part of that you can't publish from it um, unless you then go and gain ethics and <laughs> go through those processes. Um, now we have two types of observations. Direct observation where you're observing what's occurring in the case context and participant observation where you're observing the participants um, which may also extend beyond the direct observation period. So if you're looking at, say, what's happening during test taking um, and you're doing direct observations of what's occurring during the students conducting, taking a test, that's one thing. Participant observation might extend to looking at what's happening with students before they take the test, and what happens with them after, what happens with the teacher after and before, and other aspects of observation beyond just the specifics of the case. And then there's what we call artifacts. These are things that we can collect. It might be photos, it might be video. It might be, again, documents or um, assignments or other things that we can actually utilize to assist in our analysis and the rich data that we are exploring as part of a case study. So think about some of those elements of um, case studies that you need to consider in developing your own case study, um, your participant selection, 
and how you're going to actually collect data about what's occurring in the case that you're exploring. Now, I've provided you with two additional documents that go into case study development in much greater depth. So they will assist you in your assignment, but of course they're quite comprehensive documents. They're not included in the quizzes for the course. But I encourage you to explore those documents to help you develop ideas for your own case studies, particularly around um, the analysis of the data that we'll be exploring next week. But in order to prepare for that analysis of the data, you need to design your case study. Um, and of course, you haven't done a case study before. You don't necessarily know what you need to do because um, you haven't done the analysis before. Um, but these documents will help you explore some of those ideas. And of course, we will discuss these in more detail in the tutorial. So you should come along to the tutorial with your ideas for a case, your ideas for your participants, and your ideas for the different types of data that you may be able to collect. And then from that, we'll um, see whether or not that will be able to be analyzable within your context for your case study and the sorts of um, rich understandings about your case may be, it may be achievable from that data. And we'll discuss this in the tutorial.